hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is tandy today we are going to be watching stupidly braveheart this was also recommended on the back of my other stupidly videos that i have um, reacted to so here's hoping it's just as good as the other ones let's have a look but i was making a number of kind of crass generalizations about americans though i don't really believe any of them uh, and i i did it for comic effect and i don't understand how anyone can have a kind of generalized view about another nation or race. I certainly don't. And I think it's because I'm, I'm different to a lot of you. I'm not necessarily better, but I am. <laughs> I'm different. And I'm better, let's face it. But I, but, and I think I, I feel a little bit kind of removed from your human society, because I'm actually, I'm adopted. I'm an adopted man. And so I'm suspicious of notions of identity or nationhood. For example, I grew up it's something thinking in the back that I was of his English, hand. Right? But about two years ago, I found out, this is true, I found out that my real father is Scottish, right? Which, of course, means that I'm Scottish, because as you'll know, Scottishness is passed on through the male genes. <laughs> right? The disability. <laughs> and uh, it, it overwhelms all female chromosomes. And that's why right. there are no Scottish women. Oh, there's no Scottish women. <laughs> None it. There are men in kilts, but that's just <laughs> nature trying to find its own level. <laughs> and if a Scottish man wants to breed, of course, you have to travel south of the border. Normally, you get as far as a major English railway station, get off the train, lie down in a gutter drunk, and hope some pollen lands on you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can say that, remember, because I... Technically, I am Scotch. <laughs> Scotch. Genetically, if not That's culturally. Good. But I think that even though I grew up thinking I was English, I think I always knew that I was one of you. You know, because I'd go into school Monday mornings and people would go, Did you see the sport at the weekend, Stu? The brilliant sport that all men must like with England winning in it. It was good, wasn't it? And I'd go, No, in fact, it filled me with feelings of revulsion and disgust. <laughs> <laughs> then they said, what about the rich tapestry, the tableau of English culture and history? Do you take no pleasure in that? And I go, no, in fact, the whole notion of English culture just makes me feel kind of mentally, physically and spiritually bereft. And they go, what about the English language, the tongue of Shakespeare, Shelley, Blake, Churchill? Does that not stir some residual national pride in you? And I go, no, in fact, whenever I hear an English accent, I have to be physically sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I would hear my own voice answering their question. <laughs> and I would start vomiting as I spoke. So I hate, as a child, I hated being English. And yet, conversely, I always harboured secret cravings for shortbread, offal and heroin. <laughs> and heroin. <laughs> I do love shortbread. You know, I love shortbread. Deep fried heroin, if I could get it. <laughs> With sauce. <laughs> Heroin supper, 295. But so I think I always knew Glasgow could hardly believe this is happening. I always knew that I was a Scotch man. And I so I always knew. And but Scottish. Uh, yeah, Scottish, thank you for correcting me, sorry. Uh, uh. <laughs> it was an error I made on purpose for comic effect. And I'm glad that there's Cost. so little trust in yeah. me in the room that people are going. He's a fucking idiot. He doesn't know. He's, He's a moron. What's he talking about? He hasn't done the most basic research. But, no, but I always, no, even despite that, I always knew that I was Scottish in my heart, in my brave heart. I always knew that I was. I can't believe that person has corrected him. Okay, shout out if you've seen the film Braveheart. You've all seen it. Shout out. Okay, now you'll yeah. know more than any other audience I've played in the last three weeks that Braveheart is the shittest film ever made, right? <laughs> It was <laughs> a Catholic bigot Mel Gibson, and it's full of basic fundamental <laughs> looks offended. which insult your race and mine by association. Right, here's, here's just three off the top of my head. Firstly, William Wallace Braveheart, your national hero, he wasn't some, you know, noble savage living in a mud hut. We all know that. He was a privileged, educated nobleman, right? Secondly, it's not mentioned by Mel Gibson in the film, but there's some evidence to suggest that he actually fought as a mercenary for the English as a teenager. That's conveniently missed out. Thirdly, you know that French princess? He's supposed to have mm. sex with this French princess in the film, you remember? And the implication is that 
he gets her pregnant and she marries Edward II of England, so it's his kid. Now, she was a real historical figure, that French princess. But okay. at the time of the death of William Wallace, Braveheart, your national hero, <laughs> she was only four years old. <laughs> Oh. Now, Glasgow, I'm not saying <laughs> that William Wallace <laughs> Braveheart, your national hero, <laughs> didn't have sex with her. <laughs> you know, God. he probably did, if I look. <laughs> but my own personal background, there's a lot of sexual oh. opportunism involved in it. But um, not saying he didn't have sex, he probably did. But if he did, and he did, he definitely did, right? <laughs> <laughs> if it, it did, it did. Romantic <laughs> scene than the one enacted yeah. by Mel Gibson in the film. Mm. It may have happened in a tent, but it would still have been not a romantic scene because that would have made William Wallace Brown, oh, your great. national hero, a paedophile. <laughs> a Scottish paedophile. Yeah. <laughs> the Was that guy involved in the making of the film? He looks upset. Oh, he looks uncomfortable at least. Through a bothy. <laughs> a short red on its face. <sighs> muttering unintelligible sexual threats in a frankly incomprehensible dialect. <laughs> is, you know, in it, like, um, fine, leave at this point. Uh, it, gets, it gets worse. A man. Leaving there to go away. Are people leaving? The idea of a paedophile brave heart <laughs> in the privacy of the toilet cubicle. <laughs> but it's not the way. The other weird thing about that film is that in it, if you remember, like uh, Mel Gibson makes a big deal about the fact oh that God. Edward II, the prin English prince, was gay, right? As if not only did he oppress the Scots, but he did it in a kind of a gay way. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it works, but. The irony is, again, it's not mentioned in the film, that William Wallace Braveheart, your national hero himself, was actually gay. And... <laughs> no, he was, uh, sir. Was and he? We know this from some information that's come to light in the last couple of years. Firstly, about two years ago, they found a cache of love letters hidden in a nook at... Uh, <laughs> Where? Glam's <laughs> Castle or somewhere. <laughs> and the letters were exchanged between William Wallace and Robert the Bruce, and they were full of declarations. They were, they were full of declarations. <laughs> Robert the Bruce. Love and details of their, of their sexual encounters, Vig very vigorous sexual encounters that they had. But that's one thing. Then about a year ago, they found some uh, graffiti on uh, a wall. <laughs> on an old Scottish wall, on the wall. The old the wall, Scottish the wall. wall. Of rock, actually, which is. <laughs> Sounds so real. <laughs> which is a real place in uh, the Orkneys. Yeah, it sounds it. <laughs> said, um, <laughs> the graffiti, which is real, existed. It said, uh, I am a gay. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Signed William Wallace. <laughs> Braveheart, and the Braveheart bit was in inverted commas, so they knew that meant it was real. <laughs> it was like a fun right. name, you know, it's like real. So, uh, so uh, William Wallace Braveheart, our national hero, was gay. And, when I, and you know, when I was talking about this in Edinburgh in the summer, people were going, well, "Why didn't we know about that?" You know, why? Is and the reason is because the graffiti and the letters were written in Gaelic, so it wasn't translated. And people are going, well, why wasn't it translated? That's just the ancient language of our nation, of the Scots. Why wasn't it translated? But it wasn't. What Gaelic actually was, was a very kind of highly evolved form of medieval Scottish homosexual patois. <laughs> <laughs> and the clue's in the name, if you look at it, right? <laughs> Gaelic, that means gay, homosexual gay, and then lich is language or tongue. So Gaelic is literally the language of gays. And, you know, I Gay language. I off at the assembly rooms for saying this in Edinburgh, but it's true, and I don't think it's a... I, have, I think it's really great that the, our national hero, uh, William Wallace, was gay, because Scot Scotland's always been a much more 
progressive, liberally minded and kind of a nation that's not afraid to show its feminine side. And I think that um, <laughs> to England, which is a very backward kind of bigoted place. And I think that it's really good that as we enter the 21st century, one of your national folk heroes can embody a kind of progressive notion of sexual identity. I think that's a really brilliant thing. And I wish that some of the English uh, folk heroes like uh, King Alfred or, or Robin Hood or King Arthur had, had been gay. But, <laughs> but they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only William Wallace <laughs> great <Right. laughs> that definitely was gay <laughs> and of course another surely. sorry Robin someone uh, said Robin Hood was Man surely and uh, from there saying men in tights but of course the men in tights edition to the Robin Hood legend was made in the 1980s <laughs> by Mel Brooks the uh, facility to make those kind of tights didn't exist in medieval England. <laughs> they are great done, tights. Maybe they would have worn them. I'm sure that a thin, dirty egg tight is uh, <laughs> an ideal garment for medieval combat. <laughs> Often it does no protection whatsoever <laughs> to the human leg. Yeah. Of course, the other major inaccuracy about that film, of course, is in the Middle Ages there was no such country as Scotland. Scotland was actually invented, as you all know, in 1911 by <laughs> the McGowan Sweet Company. <laughs> as a way of marketing Highland toffee. Because, <laughs> of course, traditionally we think toffee's better if it's manufactured at a high altitude. That's oh, disgusting, toffee. With all due respect, it's gross. Oh, Princess Diana. Right. Um, that was that was good. Um, um, so a few things. If you have watched if you have watched the special, did that person who got up to go, were they actually leaving? Or did they maybe go and get a drink or go to the toilet and came back? Number two, if you are Scottish, have you ever is pizza crunch a thing because i've heard of peter pizza pizza crunch so many times now just like deep fried mars bars um obviously what's the thing that's cooked in its own stomach haggis haggis is it's really nice but I, i've not had pizza crunch is it good is it a real scottish delicacy uh, and also, like I've been to Scotland twice now, and I have tried because um, I, I, I know in England they sell iron brew. Didn't didn't drink it in England. I was like, I will try it when I go to Scotland. Went to Scotland for the first time in 2022. Tried um, iron brew, and oh no, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like it. Um, haggis, I love it. Every time I go there now, I have to have haggis. Um, yeah, but pizza crunch, pizza crunch, I've heard. Kevin Bridges is a big fan, but I've never seen a place that sells it. Oh, I don't even know if it's it's kind of a, like a Glasgow thing. Oh, let me know. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. And um, if you did, please subscribe and hope to see you in the next one. Bye.